Hello everybody and welcome to the continuation of the Matplotlib series. In this video and the next few subsequent videos we're going to be talking about 3D plotting. So pretty exciting stuff. So with that let's go ahead and hop in and get right to it. So the first thing that we're going to need uh, that you'll notice is a little bit different is from MPL underscore toolkits dot plot 3D we want to import axes 3D. So um, basically so we can start to use that axes 3D framework. The next thing we need is import matplotlib.pyplot as uh, PLT. So that's not new. So the next thing we want to do is we want to um, define our figure. So this is also nothing new. It's just going to be fig equals plot.figure. Uh, the next thing we want to do is define the axes. Um, so we're going to say ax equals fig.add underscore subplot. And so far that's not new. And same thing with subplot. Those same rules apply. This is 111. Now what will be new is you're going to have this uh, new parameter called projection. And projection is um, our way of telling matplotlib that we want to have this be a three-dimensional projection. So as it's creating the axes in this subplot, it's doing so with a three-dimensional uh, object in mind. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to specify the plots that we want to make. So uh, in this case, we were, we're going to need uh, three, right? We've got an X, a Y, and a Z. And X, Y, Z is going to be equal to um, the plots for three different arrays. So that's going to be array one, two, three. So this will be the X plots, the Y plots, and the Z plots. And they have to obviously equal the same, right? You need 10 X's, 10 Y's, 10 Z's, and so on. So we're going to use um, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 for the X. Um, you can make up whatever plots you want, by the way. I'm just going to make some random ones real quick, so you should do the same thing. You won't have to copy me or anything. Uh, 4, 1, 2, 4. And then this one will be two, three, five, seven, 11, 9, and 10. So I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I think we've got 10 now. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, probably an easy way to do it would just be to, well, never mind. Anyway, so define your XYZ. We'll know if it doesn't plot, <laughs> if we did it wrong. So now we do ax.plot. And so that's not anything new, but now you do plot underscore wireframe, because that's what we're plotting is this wireframe. And then in here, you put what you want to plot. In our case, we want to plot X, Y, Z. And then finally, you end with a plot.show. And that is really it. So let's generate it. Hopefully, we don't have any typos. Let's see. What do we do? Yeah, okay, we did, we, somewhere we've got an incompatible dimension. It's going to probably be this one since we counted the other ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll just add 10. Okay, save, and we'll display this. Now it's getting angry. It's angry at me, at least mine does. It gets really angry at me whenever I uh, fail at displaying the chart. So anyways, uh, here is our chart. As you might find out immediately, you can begin playing with the chart by left clicking and dragging that will rotate the chart around and you can mess with it um, however you cannot use the home button you can't so like if we do this and you hit home it's not really doing anything for us um, you also can't use back and forward to previous views because it's constantly being rendered basically and I don't think it's recalling where it is like this is still the same thing that it's showing us anyway you won't be able to use those you could use this thing. It doesn't do anything actually though. Same thing zoom. Zoom doesn't do anything either. So you might be asking, well, how do you zoom then? Because what if you really do want to zoom? Um, well, to zoom, you'll actually use your right mouse button. So just right click and hold and you can zoom in and out. And then, you know, so you can zoom out and then continue playing with it a little bit, looking around and that kind of stuff. Um, and the other thing that will work as well, if you'll notice, um, we not only have these spaces here on the chart, 
the chart itself, not on this side so much because the numbers are there. And I, the reason that spacing is there is because the numbers can flip flop, right? You can have numbers on either side, but it's a waste on whatever side there are no numbers. So say you wanted to you know, render this into an image or something, then you might want to adjust with these, this little adjuster thing you know, that you should be use, used to by now and at least get rid of you know, like the top and the right maybe and then we'll go ahead and get rid of the left and then even the bottom in this rendering we could get rid of. So now you know, it would be like a full sized image and really this one, you know, aside from these going over, that's why they made the spacing there mostly is because I guess it'll go over. But anyway, um, that's that. That's it. Those are these charts, uh, or at least the beginning of the 3D charts. There's all kinds of charts that we can do. You can do bar charts, either like flat bar charts or thick bar charts. You can make it look like a city in here, basically. Scatter plots, um, which is useful for machine learning for sure, especially with the third dimension. Um, and, and some other stuff, especially like the planes. People really like to see like planes, like probably the most stereotypical 3D plot that you can think of. So anyway, with that, that's going to conclude this basic tutorial. We will be continuing on with some more um, of the 3D plotting tutorials, that's for sure. I just wanted to put this one out uh, before people started to mutiny over my WordPress tutorials and I wasn't putting anything else fancy out. So. Anyway, that's the first 3D plot, and uh, as always, thank you for watching, thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.